Hi everybody, I wanted to make a video to explain some of the things that we're learning this week, primarily things relating to um, business finance and the financial statements. The two financial statements that you're going to deal with in this class, and probably for most of you the most um, in your careers, are the income statement and the balance sheet. And the income statement really looks at the operational performance of a business over a period of time with a special focus on profitability. Okay, so put that in your notes because that's probably a final exam question and it's something really important to know about the income statement, right? So the income statement is going to be a financial document. It's going to be dated. Business managers will look at it at the end of a week, a month, a quarter, and definitely at the end of the year. And so on the income statement, you're going to start with the term revenue and revenue can be used interchangeably with sales. So that will be all of the revenue or sales. Sometimes you might hear people ask, what's your top line? That's what they're referring to. The top line of the income statement is going to be all your sales or revenue for a particular period. Then you're going to list all the expenses and then near the bottom you'll see something called net income. Some people call it profit, right? People refer to the income statement as a profit or loss statement. And we learned very early on in this course that the objective of business is to make a profit. If your business is not making a profit, lots of us have side gigs, right? Side hustles we try. If we're consistently not making a profit, it's not really a business, it's more like a hobby because businesses are supposed to make profit. So that's a little bit about the income statement. The next uh, financial statement that we learn about in this, this week is the balance sheet. And I want you to think about it. The balance sheet uh, looks at that accounting equation that says that assets or all the things that a business owns has to equal the sum of all of the liabilities or the debts that are owed to other people or our banks, right? Things like that, loans, plus shareholders' equity. So I always try to explain the balance sheet and, and the fact that the balance sheet must balance, right? The assets, everything we own must be equal to the sum of those two things. So I like to give my students the example of a car, right? Let's say that we wanted to go out and buy a car and the car was going to be $10,000. So we get the car, the asset is the car. Its value is $10,000. So now we have the job of balancing assets $10,000 have to equal the sum of liabilities and shareholders' equity. So let's say that we're savers, right, and that we have $4,000 in savings. That's our shareholders' equity. What we would do is we would give the car dealer or the person we were buying the car from $4,000 so we own, free and clear, $4,000 of that car. Right now we're missing six because we said that 10,000 assets have to equal um, shareholders equity, which is four plus six. So where else do we go to get money, whether it's to buy this car or whether it's to buy something for a business? We usually go to a bank and get a loan, right? And loans are known as liabilities. So if we went to the bank and got a $6,000 loan, we could purchase this car with 4,000 cash, that's our shareholders equity, and 6,000 in a loan or a liability. So assets, 10,000 equal 6,000 liability loans plus 4,000 our money. I hope that makes it easy for you to kind of understand the balance sheet. That's a really simplistic way to explain it, but you'll see all the things on the balance sheet. Um, you know, you'll see any liabilities, right? Anything that we, like accounts payable is a liability, right? You'll see assets, things like accounts receivable. That's money due to us. That's an asset. Inventory, right? That's something that we purchase that has value that we hope to turn into sales or revenue. So you'll see, you'll begin, and I'm sure this is not the last time that you'll be using these terms in your degree, but this is a good jumping off point to get a firm foundation in what these things mean. So one other thing that I wanted to, two other things that I wanted to talk about, the textbook talks about industry benchmarks. That's really important too. I know a lot of you here are probably in hospitality degrees. Maybe you started with a culinary or um, a baking and pastry degree or something like that. So we can use a, an industry benchmark, meaning that if we look in the restaurant industry, we can say, okay, 
how much uh, how much can we afford to pay um, for the food or products or beverages that we're going to sell to create revenue? So we look to our industry and we say that an industry benchmark for food cost can't be more than 30% of total sales. So 30% would be our industry benchmark. Now, the sneaker industry would be an entirely different industry benchmark for its cost of goods sold. Our cost of goods sold would be food and um, you know, sugar and fruit and whatever else, um, vodka, whatever else we're putting in cocktails or, or in savory or sweet menu items. The last thing that I want to talk to you about and explain a little bit is this chapter dives a little bit into financial race ratios. They talk a little bit of return on assets I noticed in there. So you'll get a deeper dive in this if you take maybe um, FISV 2000, which sometimes I teach, which really goes into an entire chapter just on financial ratios. But ratios, um, by nature, a ratio will show a relationship with two things, right? So as we're analyzing financial ratios, maybe we're looking um, at something like profit margin, right? And we're looking at the relationship between the amount of net income and profit that we can earn related to and how it compares to total sales. Or maybe we're looking at the return on assets. We're looking at how much profit we can deliver based on the assets that we bought. Because that's important too. If we're going to be saying to our shareholders or to our partners, we want to invest in more assets, right? We want to invest in um, you know, a, a new machine for the factory, or we want to invest in a new oven or something like that. Well, we better be able to pay that back with the sales that we're able to generate because of the purchase of that asset. So I hope this brief five, six minute video helped you to understand some of those terms a little bit better. Please reach out to me if you have any questions. We're almost to the finish line. I'll see you in the course this week. Bye.